do you have one of those games you know isn't particularly good but love playing anyway? I do. It's Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion. Nostalgia is a powerful thing. I remember getting the Xbox 360 the day it came out and Oblivion alongside it. I don't even want to know how many hours I've put into this game over the years. Mind you, that doesn't mean the game is good. Far from it in fact. The game is so uneven I felt it actually necessary to break down the main story, the factions and the DLC each into their own video. But what better place to start than the main story questline? I guess I should get the good stuff out of the way first since that won't take too long. Oblivion, like most Bethesda games, wants to give you that sense of exploration, and it still feels great here despite the game's age. In a lot of ways, it feels better than in later titles like Skyrim. You actually need to take into consideration the condition of your weapons and armor. Having your sword break halfway through a dungeon isn't something you want, and if it does happen, it's because of your poor planning. And I love that. Despite the age of the engine, the actual landscapes can still be pretty too, even with the large amount of environmental pop-in. The game's animations are completely jank, but for some reason I love the way having my character slide all over the landscape and floating up the side of hills while I hammer the jump button feels. Sean Bean is in the game, and he dies, kinda but not really, which is always nice, and the soundtrack by Jeremy Soule is just, it is magical, and it makes me want to avoid using the fast travel. In terms of positive things specific to the main storyline, I think the two quests, Blood of the Divines and Miss Karkand, or Miss Karkand, Miss Karkand, uh, either way, they both make for genuinely fun dungeon crawls. But, that's all I can say that's positive for the main quest itself. The story revolves largely around closing these things called Oblivion Gates, and with 20 quests in the main story, 9 of them involve going into the Plains of Oblivion, which would be fine if the Plains of Oblivion weren't so fucking boring, so that's over half the game spent in this one boring location. You could of course space them out with the side quests, but that creates a problem of taking away any sense of agency from the game world, which is a problem which, to be fair, most open world games still suffer with. This is made worse by the fact the main quests that don't involve the Oblivion Gates are dull as fuck, and most of them are pretty awful, especially ones like the Spies in Bruma. Eeeh. A lot of these quests also take place around the main cities, which kind of discourages exploration, which is a shame because the environment is huge. At the end of it all, while the game's story concludes with some visual spectacle, it also kind of ends with a whimper, and it's a shame really. And that's just the main quest line. When you take into account the core game's issues like the way enemies and items scale with your leveling which takes away the sense of progression, which is something that Skyrim still fucking didn't fix, the way characters just look like a car crash victim made of Play-Doh, and the fact there's only a handful of voice actors, you got yourself a bad first impression. So does G-Men recommend Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion's main questline? No, not really. It's a good way to learn the mechanics, I guess. But uh, thankfully things will slowly start getting better from here on in with the factions. Very slowly. I didn't mention the moment you exit the tutorial in the open world. It's still fantastic. <laughs>